Welcome to my shop. We're going to do something a little bit different today. A few years ago, I got into collecting these commercial apple peelers. This is a rival number two, patented June 25th, looks like 1889. This particular machine came from an antique store in Kashmir, Washington. There was a little antique store right there in town. It was missing a few things. I think it needed repair on this this horn here. It was broken off, so I brazed a new piece on and then filed the notches for the spring adjustment. And a general cleaning and lubrication because they kind of get gummy with the apple juice over time. And, uh, and it had been sitting for who knows how long. Uh, for those that follow my railroad content, this is somewhat related. In the days before mechanical refrigeration or iced refrigeration rail cars, fruit had to be cut and dried before it could be shipped. You can imagine going across the country in a shipping crate, going through warm, humid climate or something. The fruit would spoil before it made it to the other end. So it was important that it was dried. Because of the high demand for peeling, a lot of people started inventing machines. And as they invented, they would issue patents that blocked competitors from using those technologies. So all kinds of different novel arrangements came up for peeling these different fruits. There's a great book called Apple Pearers by Don Thornton that covers all the different shapes and sizes from homemade apple peelers for pies all the way up to the big commercial units. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the reason I've got this machine out is because I found a slicer arm. This is the other accessory. So normally these would just be for peeling and coring and then there'd be a separate process to slice them for dehydration or to go into a pie. These are rare as hen's teeth, and I was lucky enough that there was a person on eBay who I'd bought some, some blades from who had an original and let me copy it to cast it. So I have these castings. The raw casting looks like this. There are no holes or machined flat surfaces. The machined up casting looks like this, and those are the holes that mount the hardware, you can see there's a metal tab here that's riveted here, and then there's a bolt that pinches the slicer blade. So what we'll do, let's do an apple without the slicer attachment first, and then we'll do one with, and we'll compare the two. I haven't really adjusted this, so I'm not sure how effectively it's gonna peel, but the blade does feel sharp. These apples are kind of the duds of the harvest, you can see there's worm passages, so it's okay if we use these up. We don't have to worry about wasting an apple. Let's try. This one's got a major flaw in it, so let's do this one. So the trick is you stick these on here, and you don't want to impale your hand. You don't want to shove it on so hard that these come out the other end. And you want to try to get it as centered as possible. So let's see what happens. Ooh. And you can see it's got a soft spot, but for the most part, we got most of the peel. Let's clean this up a little bit. That's pretty gross. It's a nice, precise core. You can see this, this core is actually rotten, so it's not helpful. But And then you can also change the shape of this spoon. You can flatten it out, widen it, and adjust it. The further you bring it away from center line, the larger circle it cuts away from that center core. So if you're concerned about having too many seeds left over, there are some adjustments you can do to fix that. I'm really curious to see how this works. Let's take this right there, get it to stay put. I've got this blade on here, but let's think about how this is gonna work. We've got a rotating apple here. We only need to go in as far as this bracket in order to make that cut. Going any further is not going to help because that side of the apple is going to come around and it's still going to get cut. So the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure this doesn't crash into here. So let's bring it in. Of course, now that you bring it in, you can't tighten it, but we can get it close. Okay, I think we want to keep it well away from the moving parts because we don't want it to get dull, but I think... This orientation is going to get us there. Let's just make sure that we've got freedom of motion. Yeah, we'll leave a little extra gap there. About an eighth of an inch at the widest part. Now, let's see. Are we fouling? I don't think we're fouling the blade for the peeler. 
Let's just do one more test run. Oh, we are. Look at that. So that tells us we need to we need to be down just a hair to avoid hitting that. Otherwise, we're going to break some castings. So we'll bring it just below that so it can pass by. Look at that. We'll go nice and slow. I may have to use a good apple because these rotten apples aren't so good. Okay, let's give this thing a shot. Oh no, <laughs> total destruction. <laughs> That's not so good. <laughs> All right, let's find a better apple. Let's try another one. Well, I can see what happens. We get about halfway through the slicing action and then the apple doesn't release. Okay, we're gonna test the hypothesis. In order to do that, we need to isolate variables. So what we're gonna do is take this off and see if that has anything to do with this bottoming out. If it still does the same thing without this, then we know that this is not necessarily the entire problem. I have a fairly solid apple here. Let's load this baby up and see what happens if we just do the peeling and the slicing. Ah, same problem. Okay. So we're unable to get through the apple just with this blade itself. That's completely independent of this action over here with a coring spoon. This blade is not able to cut through this with the amount of purchase that we have on these forks. So we need to think about the physics of what's happening when this blade comes in the apple and see if we can reason our way through what's happening. I'm starting to run out of apples, so we're gonna have to do this as a mind experiment. We'll just watch this thing and see what's going on here. So the apple's coming around here And we get about this far in and we weren't run into trouble after a little more research i realized that i have this blade in in the incorrect orientation as indicated by this arrow what's happening here is the closest portion of the blade is the sharp end and it's stabbing into the apple the orientation shown here would work fine if the apple was spinning in the opposite direction this is the orientation that we want the blade you can see how the apple would spin into the portion furthest away and then as it rotates it slices upward along the length of the blade to the portion closest. This also helps me understand how I need to adjust this. Let's loosen up on this coring spoon a little bit and move that away so that it just falls short of that blade. I'm going to keep the shim in there because I like the angle that it arrives at. Gives me a little bit more coring ability. Now, I need to make a quick adjustment to make sure this is at the correct height. Okay, that's looking good. Now, we want to bring this in so it almost touches on the inside, like that. Now we tighten it down. I think we're ready for prime time. We have three apples left. Let's do this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> now the trick is we need to keep some of this apple together. So I think we want to move this blade out to leave a little bit of a core in the middle so that they spiral. Like that. 
We'll try this again. That's more like it. Now we've separated the apple from the peel. We'll do one last victory apple. Ready for pie. So you can see we could fine tune that if we wanted to make these completely separated. All right, well, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support on the channel. And uh, these kind of projects are fun to share with people because not everyone gets to see them. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit subscribe, maybe make a comment. All the interaction on the page helps keep it supported. Um, and it, it lets YouTube recommend it because it shows that you're interested.